Hello, my name is Sasha Nikodievich. I'm the CanNet Manager. Joining me for this uh, What's New presentation is Crystal Savage, our National Operations Manager, as well as Jean-Michel Dupe, our CanNet Technical Manager. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Crystal. Thanks, Sasha. Today we are going to walk you through how to access iScope and some of the features and benefits within it. To access iScope, you must have what's referred to as a Trimble SSO, or rather a single sign-on. Each subscription must have an SSO tied to it. Your single sign-on is different from your CanNet credentials. The SSO username and password is what is used to access iScope, whereas your CanNet username and password is what you would use in your equipment. In your browser, go to vrs.cannet.ca and click on Login. Note, first-time users will have to enter their email address and forgot password. An email will then be sent to you with instructions on setting up your password. However, if you're not the primary contact of the CanNet subscription at the time of purchase, you will need to contact our technical support by emailing support at cancel.ca. Please advise CanNet SSO setup and provide the following pieces of information. The CanNet login username, email address, first and last name, as well as phone number. It could take up to 24 hours before you're able to log in. If there is a change in staff and a subscription needs to be reissued, you must follow the above instructions. The two scenarios I spoke about are only required for existing subscriptions wanting to access iScope. Any new subscriptions ordered will get an auto-generated email with your login credentials to the Trimble store. These are also used for iScope. You will receive your subscription credentials in a separate email. These will get used with your equipment. I will now pass it on to John Michelle to go over some features and benefits of iScope. Thank you, Crystal. So now we'll come to the part that we'll do a short demonstration of the Canet web portal. So as we said, we it's all going to start at vrs.canet.ca. And I'll show you how to log in with using your Trimble SSO. And then we'll see the, uh, the sensor map. We'll explore the reference data shop where you can download some raw data from our stations. And then I'll show you some exciting new functionality uh, that I've been introduced by Trimble. Uh, when they uh, took over the server back in September, uh, which are called the iScope functionalities. And we'll uh, take a look also at the session history that you can review. So as we said, it's all going to start by heading to our web portal. So vrs.can-net.ca. Once you hit the portal, you'll click on the login button. And this is where you'll be invited to enter your Trimble SSO. And once again, we want to make clear that it's your Trimble SSO and not your Trimble credential that you enter at this point. If for any reason you don't remember your password or you want to change it, you can always hit forgot password and you'll receive an email inviting you to uh, change your uh, password. All right, now we're logged in. So the first menu that you see on the, uh, on the top is the sensor map. So the sensor map is actually a live status of the network. So you can see uh, all our stations, what's going on. Uh, if they're green, it means that it, where everything is re uh, reported working good and and if you see some yellow or some red there might be some issues with the station uh, most of the time it's related to the internet you can uh, click on any of those station uh, to get some additional health information and you can also click on the info tab to validate what are the uh, broadcasted uh, coordinates and the type of receiver that's on site You also have uh, some network information. So the I-95 and the IRM Grim indicators are actually some uh, information about the quality of the GNSS solution. So the I-95 ionosphere is an indicator that shows the ionospheric activity. The, the ionospheric activity, when it's very active, it's gonna have a influence on the quality of your surveys. It affects the GNSS signal. 
So you want it to be as low as possible. So you can review those uh, and make sure that they're within some, some tolerance. So as you see today, uh, it's pretty quiet. The IRIM GRIM indicators are a little bit similar, but they will go with more geometric information, uh, meaning that it's uh, going to be expressed. The quality is going to be expressed uh, with like meters. So in this case, you can see uh, the predicted ionosphere error uh, out east, which is a few centimeters. You can see the same out west. And you will see the grim indicators, so the predicted geometric errors out east and the same out west. So obviously those, the east Canada and western Canada are very large, so there's definitely going to be some local uh, differences according to what you see. Don't take this, don't put all your money on this. It's a simple indicator as, uh, you know, if there's a very large distortion brought by, uh, you know, ionospheric activities. So as you can see here, it's pretty normal. So nothing to worry about. So let's go to the reference data shop. So the reference data shop is, as I explained, this is where you can download some raw data from all of our stations or generate the VRS observation uh, that will be it related uh, from our stations. So it starts by going to start a new order. And then at this point, you can either select specific one or several specific stations if you're interested. In. And at this point, you can either choose them from the map by simply selecting the little no notes. And if you keep your control button pressed, then you can proceed and select several stations. Or you can simply do your selection from the list. And again, by holding the control button, you can select one or several station. Then you can proceed to the time selection. So the time selection, you simply select the date for which you want to start uh, getting your data. Enter the start time, the duration, and the interval at which you want your data. Remember that those information are entered or expected as GPS time, so you'll have to do the conversion for uh, your local time. It's exactly the same process if you want to generate some VRS data. So at this point, you can either grab the little uh, uh, button and move it around to the region that you're interested in, or you can enter the coordinates in the box. Then you hit the time selection, and that's the same as what we've seen earlier. You select your date, start time, duration, and interval. Another uh, section is the uh, active subscription. So this is where you can actually see D or several uh, CANET subscriptions that are assigned to your SSO. And you can always keep an eye on uh, when they're expiring. So you can prepare yourself for renewal. Or start a conversation with us about it. Now let's look at the exciting new features uh, from iScope. So you actually have an iScope live and an iScope, uh, just the iScope live and just normal iScope. So let's hit the, the VRS iScope live information. And as described, this is actually a live information about uh, your subscription or all the subscription that you have. So you can select any of your active subscription and get additional detail about what's going on. So in this case, when you click on the uh, on your subscription, you can see when was that information reported. You can see where it is, where it's currently sitting at. And you can get some additional rover information. Uh, you can see the mount point that they're using, uh, the IP address, what's coming on, uh, the software they're using, and you can see the fixed percentage. So uh and what most important like the sent satellite so you can see the the satellite number of satellites that are sent by the server and the number of satellites that are used uh by the rover so that's just very cool stuff so if these obviously you might be interested in getting some information about past surveys 
So that's what you'll find in the VRS ISCO section. So once again, you select the user. Most of the time you only have one user to select from, and then you'll choose the uh, candidate subscription that you want to look for. After that, you have to pick up the, uh, you have to pick the session that you're interested in. Remember that this is only kept for 30 days or a maximum of 50 sessions. So as you can see, uh, I can review a survey that I did on the 8th of December. So as you can see, I went out of the office, uh, went on the sidewalk for a while and then came back to the office. So this is a great tool to figure out like where was I using my uh, my sub at which date and you know where I went. What did I do? If you want more like uh, the detailed information about your different sessions, you can go to the sessions um, section. So this is going to be shown as a tab or a list rather than graphically. So just select the time span that you're interested in. Again, you'll have to select the user. And the candidate account that you're interested in. Just click the detail box to get additional information. And then when I sh hit so show sessions, then I'll get detailed information about where and when my credentials were used. So as you can see, you can even see like which resource was used. So did I download some raw data with it or which mount point was I using? And then you can see the uh, full amount of time. This is in second that I use the system for. So that concludes our presentation, short presentation of the Canet portal. Hope you enjoyed it. On behalf of the whole Canet team, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please contact us.